what do we got? This is going to be a reboot of episode 49. Okay. Three challenges that face restaurants and how to handle. Oh, so, shit. So these then, are like, this is the new challenge. This is the new challenge. This is the new list. Okay. The new, right. new. This is the new list. All right. This is the new, new. Yes. The new, new. <clears throat> the new, new. Yes. Challenges. Imagine a perfect world where you can build a restaurant, open the doors, and make loads of money. Unfortunately, those days are over. It takes great leadership, hard work, and long hours to operate a successful restaurant. Together, we can make it happen. This is Restaurantopia. Restaurants who are currently using TikTok to get new awareness for their restaurant and get in new customers are seeing explosive growth based on how the algorithm is working to get them new guests. It's incredible. So if you're not leveraging TikTok yet for your restaurant, you're going to want to start doing this. But here's the thing. It's confusing. There's a lot of going on. You got to create it. How do you know what to do? Well, guys, I got the answer for you. My name is Rev Ciancio, and I created this incredible guide for you called TikTok for Restaurants what you need to know. Now, when you get this, it's a 20 page TikTok strategy guide for restaurants. It is the exact step-by-step process that your restaurant brand needs to go to, to get started, to build a strategy that works and create an engaging content that works on the platform. It is legitimately a complete walkthrough of everything you need to know. You're going to download this guide and it's going to walk you through. Do step one, do step two, do step three. That's what I like. I like to be told, hey, I'm good at following instructions and you can too when you get this guide. Guys, I'm super grateful for you. I hope you check it out. And if you have any questions, reach out to me. I'm happy to answer. And then also follow me on TikTok. I'm at Red Ciencio. Guys, thanks so much. Check out the guide. Welcome back to N- no, N- NPR Topia. An- An- Anthony, you Yeah, you know what? You need one. Why do I need one? Take us you do. You need Because you have good energy coming in. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. I'm telling you. Coming in hot, right? Ready? Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Welcome back to Restaurant Topia. Got the usual cast of characters here. Brian Seitz. Good morning. David Russ. Good afternoon. So, Dave, I understand this topic is yours. And it's one we're going to actually reboot an episode. It's the first time I rebooted an episode. I didn't know this rule was, was applicable or I might have done this already, right? We're closing in on 100. I know. That's crazy. So inevitably, we're going to recycle and revisit and rehab and remodel some some material. So I actually love this because what we were talking about two years ago is absolutely not relevant today. But it's a great overarching topic. Right. But, but so much of our content is evergreen. So I encourage everyone to go back and listen. <laughs> well, there's that. Shameless plug. Shameless plug. Yeah, there's, that, yeah, there's that too. Yeah. Please go back and listen. No, but uh, I like how you said that because we're, we're coming up on 100. This is actually episode 49 okay. that we're going to reboot. Okay. But we're not going to, I'm not rebooting this because I feel like it needs to be changed because these things, and I'm going to revisit what we talked about in episode 49. Okay. These are still important things in, yeah. in the restaurant industry. There's just things that have overshadowed them now that we got to work on. Three challenges that restaurants face and how to handle. Okay. Love it. We talked about back then, menu, okay? Menu is your number one marketing tool for your restaurant. We talked about, you know, the decisions you make, what you want to be, the size of the menu, all those different things. We talked about menus and those things. I, I would say still very relevant. I was going to say, relevant. can I tell you that 75% of my consoles still revolve around menu size and yeah. menu placement and no, menu stuff? No question. Yep. No question. Yeah. We haven't even got on other points. It's just menu. Yeah. Number two, service. Hiring, training, retaining, recalibrating. Wow. Okay. okay. So yeah. again, I don't pretty, know how you can pretty, top these. You're yeah. better bring the fire. The, yeah, these are like pillars. Pretty good stuff. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And they still are. Okay. They still yeah. are. I'm just telling you now. Okay. So number three, complacency. Oh my god. I feel like we I just loved, talked about I love that. all. The, I love all three yeah. of these. Yeah. This was an episode. If you want to go back to episode 49, it's okay. a great episode. Okay. Go back. I, listen I, to episode 49. I'm okay. gonna listen to it again. Let me talk to you about the new big three. Okay. okay. The new big three. Evan and, Mobley, Darius Garland, and Jared Allen. General Motors, Ford, and Chrysler. Facebook, Instagram, and WhatsApp. Ooh. TikTok, I think. TikTok. I think you got to put TikTok in the top. I, I was keeping it in the meta. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> all right. The new big three. We've talked about all of these things recently throughout this endemic. Okay. Mm. Inflation, number one. Oh, that's true. Okay. Okay. Labor increases. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. And pivoting in the post COVID world, the things that we need to do, change, think differently, uh, you know, to back to Brian's point about B. Aggressive. Be, be, be aggressive. aggressive. Yeah, no. Okay. Um, so I want to break these down a little bit. And I want to give an example that we've actually done with a customer at Hillcrest Foods recently okay. um, to help them through these things. Okay. So this is the new focus. Okay. So yeah, you need your menu. You need your service. You need to not be complacent. Okay. But this is the things that you need to act on right now mm-hmm. because it's here and it's not going away okay. and your money's going out the door if you're not doing these. Okay. We cool? I love it. All right. No, Way cool. Good. Inflation. Brand. Okay. So we're seeing anywhere from 10 to 15% inflation on average. Okay. Now I've seen as low as eight. I've seen as high as 22 in restaurant concepts. 
Okay. I was going to so, say because the, the national index is like 6.8 or last yeah, month or so. I, I don't, I don't care. Restaurants is the national, amplified. The national index does not take money from your pocketbook. Correct. No, this no, no. I'm just, I was putting things in context for yeah. people because I agree with you wholeheartedly. There's there's the normal inflation and then there's restaurant inflation, Correct. which is three, 3x. But Correct. there's there's macro and microeconomics. What we're talking about is the basket of goods is what your order guide is. Mm-hmm. Yep. That is, yep. I mean, so this is what I'm talking about. So yeah. these are specific restaurant customers that we've run cost of goods reports to mm-hmm. show their inflation in their restaurant mm-hmm. as low as eight, as high as 22. I okay. love it. So 10 to 15% over last year is okay. what we're looking at. Okay. So going into 2022, if you were a million dollars, let's just, so just to keep the math as easy as possible. That's a good idea. You're a million dollar restaurant. Okay. okay. So your sales are a million dollars. Okay. You're at 30% cost of goods or 30% food costs. So you, yep. you buy 300,000 in, in, in food purchases. Okay. Yep. 15% inflation. Okay. Is $45,000. Wow. Gone. Evaporated. Yeah. Gone. Okay. So if you think that you're just going to go out and, and Anthony talked about uh, shadow inflation and you're going to go out and you're, you're going to cut and you're going to do things and you're going to, you're going to find that mm-hmm. 45 grand. You're not, it ain't happening. It ain't happening. You're not right. going to save your way to it. No, no chance. No chance. Not in this. Okay. Now you may have been able to squeak by over the years doing this yeah. with three percent, two percent, four percent. But you, you know, typical inflation. Yeah. This is hyper hyper inflation, and you've got to act fast. Okay. Yep. I want to talk about labor, even though I have a lot of bullet points under inflation. I want to talk about labor too, because I want to package these two together and explain an example of where you can effectively, you know, make some moves to get this money back. Okay. okay. So remember, forty five grand on inflation. Yep. Okay. Labor, okay. You're that same million dollar restaurant. You have, we're seeing, you know, because you got to increase wages, you got to do these things. We're seeing about a 10 percent increase in labor. Okay. okay. So again, if you got 25 percent labor, it's 250,000. 10 percent is 25 grand. So you've got 45. You got 70. 25. You got 70 thousand dollars that you got to make up. Okay. Yeah. This is real, guys. Now, this is for a million dollar restaurant. If you're lucky enough to have a two million dollar restaurant, yeah. a three million dollar restaurant, or four, yeah. the, the more Multiply. sales, the more you're losing. Okay. Yeah. Now, on the other end, you have more ability to make it back because you have bigger sales. And, I, you know. I love these numbers because they're not contrived. They're they're not drawn from some national source that's attached. Like you've actually done these spreadsheets for customers. Correct. You've yeah, looked absolutely. at their basket of goods year over year and said, "This is where you're at." You know. Absolutely. Yeah. It's crazy. So I'm going to walk you through what we did with, uh, you know, a. a pretty large customized it to help them figure this out. So the first thing we did was we went out and we said, we're going to benchmark competition. Okay. okay. And we want to especially include national chains because they have all the courage to move the price. Up. Yeah. Okay. All the courage. So you want some local in there, but you want some national chains that you compete with in your area or that you want to emulate or whatever it is, or that are, that are similar concepts so that you can see this. Okay. So, so you do the benchmarking and the benchmarking is simple and we can leave some stuff in the show notes on it, but the benchmarking is basically, you know, your items within each category and what you're charging versus what they're charging. And you just kind of see the variances. Okay. Mm-hmm. The other thing you want to do is you want to get your POS in Excel. Okay. Get your sales for at least a month, preferably two or three months, a quarter, get your sales into a POS or, or get your sales from your POS into an Excel document and split them up by category. And, and most and of the time that's a straight extraction, yeah. Yeah. you know, or export. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Export. yeah, for sure. So you got to have a little bit of Excel skill. You know, I like to have like a master and then create tabs of like, here's my appetizers, here's my entrees, here's my sandwiches and, and break the menu down like that. So if so you're saying you, someone needs help, they can reach out to us. Absolutely. Yeah. No question. No question. So what we did, this was an actual sit, this was a sit down pizza restaurant that okay. we did this with high volume they were well over that million dollar in sales but i i still want to keep it on the million dollars yeah, yeah. so that we can make the math easy so we broke them down into pizza toppings beverage and slow movers okay and we looked at each thing and we looked at the benchmarking and we went through and we said okay where can we move the price okay now the important thing when you just say like you just need to increase your menu price mm-hmm Okay. Yeah. Whatever. You know what I mean? Like there's, you know, but when you actually show somebody, this is how many you sell of this item. And if you yeah. cre- increase this 50 cents, like this is actually what it'll deliver. Mm-hmm. That's a whole nother like level of yeah. like, aha. Okay. Well, you, you, you can't imagine it. You're being shown exactly what will happen. It's like right. a cause and effect. Right. And again, I don't think with the menu prices that we're talking about or that you've implemented, you're not going to see a decrease in demand. So when you make the move, people aren't going to buy less. You're probably going to have the same, you're going to have the same number of units sold. You're just going to make more money, correct? 
Yeah, no, absolutely. You, well, you that's should. market elasticity, right? Right, yeah, you yeah, should, yeah. and that, and that's the importance of doing the benchmarking. You're mm-hmm. not just you're not just uh, you know looking at it and saying like, well, I just am going to increase this three bucks and this a dollar, and it's willy nilly. Like you're actually strategically looking at it. Okay, mm-hmm. so that's what we did. We went through and we said on pizza. Okay, can I made, slide something in real yeah, quick? Please, yeah, please, okay, please. so. Because I'm, I'm sorry, I'm like on a, I'm no, on a roll. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. no, I love it. And, and what you just said to me was you're strategically raising prices in areas that you need to to make an impact. So often we see is just, okay, I want to raise everything a dollar. Yeah. Right? The customer <clears throat> perception of that is much different than you strategically raising certain prices here and there. Yeah. Right? The, and, and I could be speaking, and you guys could disagree with me, but when I see a company just raise prices across the board blanket style, yeah. it tells me they're not very you know strategic. And A, it might be confused with a little bit of greed there, right? Because mm-hmm. you're just like blanketing. But when you're strategic about it, it shows me that you're resisting raising all your prices and you're only doing it to where you have to. And I think that's so much more defendable from from the ownership standpoint as far as the customer perception is concerned. Yeah, but I would tell you like in a normal inflationary period, like yeah. that's way more way more prominent because you don't need to increase everything. But I'm yeah. telling you right now, if you're sitting here with a restaurant in January or February of 2022 and you have not raised your pricing through the endemic, you're, you, you're going to need to move everything. You, you there, there's no, you yeah. know, I mean, there's no, yeah. uh, the only items that you're not going to move on your menu are the ones you're taking off. And that's my fear because you can't take all that at one point without shocking the system. No, but this is how you do it. So you figure out what the price increase you want it to be mm-hmm. and then roll it out. Just, and again, we pattern the national chains, yep. what they do well, pattern, a, a four pricing, a, a four, uh, you know, step, four step. No, not step. Know, it's yeah. a it, it, pattern, incremental. pattern and incremental price increase over the next eight months I, and do it do it every two months uh what that looks like you know with new menus and that's really why you want to have you want to have digital menus you want to make see, sure that, i don't know if i agree with that i'm going to disagree with you okay because you're putting the c- consumer through four situations of oh they raised the price oh they raised the price you know what i mean because you've I, got I, your I, regulars you've got your stuff like I, this is guys this is a crisis okay seventy thousand dollars okay what do you net in a million dollar restaurant Hundred grand if you're doing great. I just took seventy from you. I know you're going to wait eight months. Okay. You're go, well, let me let me let me dip my toe in. No, every couple understood. Months or eight but, months. Nah, but the All fact right, is, I'm going out of business, dude. No, right. I understand right. it. So <laughs> if if the situation is that drastic, yes, absolutely. What do you mean that but drastic? It 15%, is fifteen percent. Okay. Right, I'm talking about twenty five percent. I understand, but still, there's there's got to be some respect paid. I, I can tell you, my cup of coffee that I get, it's, there's a national chain right by my place. I, I hate going there, but it's there's no independent for me to go. It sucks. But they've raised my cup of coffee. Thank you. <laughs> they've raised my cup of coffee 50 cents over the past mm-hmm. like oh, yeah. eight months. And yeah. I've noticed because I'm have. hypersensitive uh, to that. Yeah. But it's 10 cents, 10 cents, 10 cents. It softens the blow so much. Yeah. So if you have the time to wait, which is not in your example, I, I would argue that Brian's incremental steps, absolutely imperative. Yeah. But if you're on death's door, then yeah, desperate times call for desperate, I, desperate measures. But if you've been incrementally increasing throughout COVID, yeah. then I'm not talking to you. Yeah, okay. And okay, that, that's and that, that, that would that's be my you. example. I'm okay, yeah, same. But you're you're saying, I've ignored this, stuck my head in the sand, inflation will turn, it will go back down, that will never happen, but that's what you were thinking, and now you're at a crossroads. I have to make price increases. How would you do it? Okay, you still need some strategy. Okay. Okay, but I'm telling you, it is more of an across-the-board deal. Like, okay. you've got to make these moves. You've got to make these moves, okay? So here's what we did with this particular sit-down pizza restaurant. Um, now, these numbers aren't what we did, but I, I yeah. ratioed them down, okay. you know, and made them equate. So we had, you know, $70,000 we're trying to capture, okay? So we, we went out, and we with pizza pricing— this is great how you backed into this. Yeah. So you you knew what this you knew what the number was that you needed. It's goal setting. Yeah. yeah. It yeah. is goal setting, but mm-hmm. it's also it makes it rational like you're not yep. taking from anybody. You're actually just leveling the playing field. I'm trying to stay open so I can still serve you. Correct. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. you're and, and you're create upset. livelihood for the people that rely Absolutely. on you for yeah. pay. Absolutely. This is not a hobby. This Listen, is not a, making uh, profit is irresponsible. It no. is. Yeah. No question. No. So we went out on it and we looked at the pizza menu and we said we found 30 grand in pizza. Mm-hmm. It increases. So again, we how do I know it's thirty grand? Because I know what they sold. Yeah. I know how much it yep. costs. I know how much I increased it, and we did thirty grand there. We looked at toppings. Okay, now you say you can't do it across the board. No, we did toppings across the board. Yeah, yeah. I think we that's, did a blanket that's fair. topping increase. It was thirteen grand. Okay. Yeah. We did beverage. Okay. Again, whether you you know you get benchmark beverage, most local independent operators are behind on beverage. Sorry. I would say that's you go to a national chain, you get a soda, it's four bucks. 
Yeah. I'm sorry. Crazy. Yeah. You go look at it. Go out and yeah. buy a Diet Coke at a national chain. Yeah. You're spending four dollars. Now I'm not saying you need to go to four dollars, but at least you know, a buck fifty is no longer the price you should probably be charging. Right. I agree. Beverages we found twelve grand. Okay. Then we went and we said, what are all the slow movers that are still on the menu? You know, can we trim some of them off? Mm-hmm. Trim the order guide, all the efficiencies yeah, yeah. that you've talked about in previous mm-hmm. episodes, Anthony. But then the, the what slow movers that we want to keep, you know, how how can we how can we increase those? Because you know it, they're not as frequent. Like people aren't, you know, yeah. it's not a big mover, or whatever, you know. But you can make bigger moves on those slower movers. Okay, because it impacts less people. Correct. And the people who do order those slower movers are <laughs> genuine fans of those dishes. That's yeah. why they continue to order. Exactly. So so we did that, and we found fifteen grand. Wow. Okay, so that's seventy grand on the nose. Okay, okay, if you add those all up, yeah, that's to break even. Yeah, that's to not lose money. Yeah, yeah, that's to go back so to you where you were. Literally, you literally increase pricing mm-hmm. to not lose money to stay afloat. And and that's I'm telling you, there's more operators than you can imagine, successful operators that are in this situation right now. And if you are one of them, please, this is urgent stuff. You got to mm-hmm. get this done. I, I would I would add one point to that. <clears throat> Get to the point where you're not losing money on inflation and then schedule in the next 12 months of price increases. And whether it's two price increases or whatever it is, at least have it scheduled in there on the book. I love that. I love that. So now you capture, you get back to even, Mm -hmm. and then you figure out your strategy of how you stay ahead of it. Get in touch with your graphic designer. Start that process now. Don't wait on launch date. Have it printed, ready to go, right? So I'm a a big fan of Winston Churchill, and uh, my dog's name is Winston Churchill. But Nice, okay. A lot of the people said it wasn't because of that anyway. It's a long story. (laughs) Because my kids gave me liberties to pick the name, so you call him, you call him Winnie. Or, yeah. uh, they do. I call him. Oh. I call him Winston Churchill. Okay. He's a distinguished gentleman. Most of the time, Sir Winston Churchill. Right. We really want to know, but I think he coined the phrase "this too shall pass." Right, and yeah. that, that's a really profound statement. A lot of times, I live by that mantra. But this is one of those instances where I think a lot of operators. I were thought that was my it. grandfather. I didn't uh, realize. Yeah. That was like, <laughs> Who knew? I would have looked that up immediately. Yeah. Right. So. A lot of people are sitting around saying, this is a pass, this is a pass, this is a pass. Guess what? It's not. It's not. Right. And so you, if you live by that mantra the past couple of years and, and you've scraped by and you didn't want to affect your customers, like I'm pretty sure your customers would rather be affected with some increased prices than you going out of business. They're yeah. your customers yeah. for a reason. They're fans of you. They come to you. You got to embrace that as the independent. Yeah, I agree. No, no question. If anybody's got any questions on that or how to do that or even to walk through the whole steps of the process, we'd love to, to hear from you guys. But inflation and labor, that's how you do it. You got to attack this. You got to do it now. You not wait for tomorrow. Run the POS. Get the benchmarking. Go through the project. Again, if you need any help setting that up, we'd be happy to help. But we got we got to get that done because the money is just the money's gone. Every day the money's gone. I agree. And you can reach out to Dave Ross or Anthony Hamilton at Hillcrest Foods, and they'll definitely help you out with this. We, we got people on our team that are just chomping at the bit to make sure operators stay in business and that are successful. That's the key. How do you make changes now that will keep you in business and make sure that you're successful? We want to help you and your family and your operation uh, for long-term success. So, yeah, for sure. What's the uh, what's the next one? So number three. So those are what's one and two. So number three was pivoting in the post-COVID world. So okay. we've talked about all these again. We've yeah. talked about these in, in mm-hmm. episodes, but I just want to hone in on some of these. The the three that in the three within point three are yeah. new customer habits, okay, technology, yep, and emerging trends. Okay, so I'm gonna wow. break down a unpack couple bullet points in each one. Yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll unpack it right here, and I'd right. love to hear you guys' thoughts on this. So what are the new customer habits? Okay, eating at home, eating in their car. Anywhere but inside your restaurant. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can I give you a case in point? Yeah, please. Chipotle just opened a digital kitchen right by my house. Yeah. You cannot go in there. It's just a small building. Can, they can, can you even order from there? Yeah, and, and, you get online and you no, order from no, there. No, 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 no. Can you go up to the window no. and order? No. So you're like, hey, I want to order a burrito. No, there's like, no knocking on the no, door. No, no, well, no. How do you know it's Chipotle? Is it actually labeled Chipotle? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, let you okay, in? so like, that's it's, weird. it's 400 square feet, this yeah. building. It was an old tiny little bank they redid. And it says Chipotle Digital Kitchen on it real big. And then it gives you the website or whatever. I'm sure there's a QR code you can scan. And you get online and you order, pick up there, and you go through the drive through. You tell them your name, and they give you your back, and you leave. There's no. Oh, so okay. So, so you so talk about pivoting and so you still pick up there. So you can still pick up. You yeah. just you don't go in. Yeah. So got they it. do okay, delivery and pick it. up from there. But it, what it is, it's 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 a less staff model. Mm-hmm. They don't have to do yeah. any customer facing yeah. actions, right? They don't have to clean a dining room. They don't have to change the trash. None of that. So they they reduce their. Square you need a bathroom. Just went back to the Sebastian made a scalco skit where he's like, it's like chopping the chicken in the back, but you pull like. 
<laughs> don't see that anywhere. Don't yeah. see that. Uh-uh. So, and, and so I, I think this just goes to show you like why this is so relevant. Again, if we benchmark off the corporations, especially the trendy ones, and, and really, I mean, look, you can't ignore Chipotle as a titan of the industry. Um, a lot of times what they do is leading the pack. And that they, to me. They, they master digital. I mean, yeah. if you really want to up your digital game. Oh, just, just follow their model. Well, just study what they did. Like, I don't know if your app is going to be as good or your online ordering is going to be as good, but you can make sure that it works, that it's simple, that it, it's got good food photography, that it's a great customer experience. If you're thinking like they're thinking, you're going to win. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Eating at home, you know, l- listen, guys, everybody, you know, we and we've spent a lot of time like, you know, poo-pooing third-party apps and mm-hmm. they're they're raping the customer, you know, the, the restaurant mm-hmm. and, and all those things. But I'm telling you, this is not going away. No. And I also think whether it's Uber Eats, DoorDash, uh, uh, Grubhub, there's going to be a leveling of the playing field here mm-hmm. where it's going to come down because they've trained up the customer enough to know that to use this. And I think that business model is going to become viable. Now, should you do all the things that we talk about by by marketing to that customer mm-hmm. and making sure that you capture back that interaction? But also, this is a reality. This is just like inflation. It's current. You have to be dealing with it. You have to be participating. To stick your head in the sand will not be a successful strategy. You have to engage with these and really drive revenue. Increase your prices and do all the things that you need to do with third-party delivery. But it is going to be and is now a real revenue stream for your restaurant. Yeah, yeah. love it, love no, it or hate it, you got to embrace it, right? No, so get, is- get in the game, but do it, do it right. Don't you know? Like you can be Grandpa Ross on the porch saying, "Get off my lawn." Yeah, I'm yeah. not doing third party, or you get in the game and figure out how yeah, it works. Yeah. And if you're like, I've heard so many excuses when it comes to third party, like. Oh, it's going to crush my kitchen. Well, turn it off between yeah, six probably. and eight just o'clock. Put a just, strategy together. Yeah, just put a strategy together. Like it, it, you can tailor it towards your brand and towards your operation. So mm. I love that. Yeah. God, we need to do an episode on turning it off. We should just call it turn it off because I, I have experienced that a couple of times and I get I, I get seething mad. But anyway, yeah. I, I digress. I just want to throw that in there. So so what else? You get you so you're eating at home. We could talk. That's a whole. We could do a mini series. On yeah, that. yeah. Less frequent visits. Okay. Mm-hmm. People, you're probably going to have because of eating at home. But then you're going to have less frequent visits because listen, the inflation's hitting your restaurant. It's yeah. hitting people personally too. Yeah. So they may not be able to go out to eat as much. So when they're there, what are you doing to give them the greatest experience? Yeah. When they're there, we cannot take that for granted because the person that came four times a month may only be coming twice. And, yeah. and, and I will tell you, even though that the inflation is hitting them in their pocketbook, when they are there, they're more likely to spend if they're doing fewer visits. So can you get that upsell? Are you training your staff to ask them for the dessert? Are you training the staff to tell them about this new side that you're going to love if you try it or asking them about a drink? Uh, those are the sorts of things that you really need to do with your staff and train them so you get that ticket average. Up. You got to have a pointed effort. And I, I was going to say the exact same thing until you rudely cut me off and uh, you stole all my thunder. Uh, <clears throat> I am not only a story topper, I am also an ideal stealer. <laughs> I'm just a one upper. Okay. So uh, another point in the new customer habits, user friendly everything. Okay. And we'll talk about this in technology, yep. but, but make it, make it easy. Get rid of the friction. Yep. Let, allow people to, you know, easily do business with you. It's so funny how many hurdles are involved, right? Oh, how many hurdles are involved? Yeah, I think it's so funny when you say make it easy. Every aspect of your restaurant should be super simple for the customer. Yeah, make mm-hmm. it easy to spend money. No, yeah. make it easy to spend money to everything. Yeah, I, yeah, I love that. And then consistency is a must. Must yeah. okay. You know, I mean, if you if you have inconsistent service, inconsistent food quality, inconsistent, you know, it's it, people are not going to put up with it. So that goes back to the less frequent visits. Yeah. You know, I mean, like people are maybe not there as often. So give them consistency. So you know, we had a, a really great guest, Ashish, uh, a few episodes ago that talked about you know consistency, and I think the way he said it was. Basically, people don't want better. Mm-hmm. They want the same thing they got last time. Yeah. You know, it, don't give me better. I want what I, I'm coming back to get the same thing I just got. Yeah. Don't make it and different. Mc, McDonald's is the uh, the gold standard of that, right? Yeah, sure. Where like no one around the table would say that McDonald's is great. No. But you know, you when, know what you're getting. Yeah. Yeah. It, it was such a great comment too because it, it resonated with me. I was like, oh, yeah, no, that is true. Like mm-hmm. I just I don't want better. And he goes, if I wanted better, I'd go down the street because they're better. <laughs> they're better than you. Like I want consistency, and it's, it's true. So when you make changes in your restaurant, you, you got to be aware of that. And whether it's portion size or what have you, it's people want consistency, and to maintain that consistency, is you vital. have heard twice from from owners um, in the last week is I got to worry less about what I want 
and more about what my customers want. So it comes back down to, did you make it better? Because better is subjective, mm-hmm. right? You think yeah. it's better, but do the people think yeah. it's better, you know? No, it goes back to... Well, change is always, but whether you go better or worse, change brings... Opinions. Yeah. 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 And, and it goes back to hospitality, though. You should never be thinking about what you want. Yep. I mean, again, you should understand like pricing and those sorts of things, but you need to unpack the mind of the consumer so you know exactly what they want and what to sell to them yeah Uh, josh copel uh has been putting out some great content uh just recently about you know identifying the market uh, product need fit i mean it's very traditional but it's it's, it's, it's new in the restaurant space to go know what your customers want like Mm -hmm. make sure that you're serving them and kudos to him and you know if you're looking for a second podcast other than ours to listen to that's that's another great yeah, restaurant marketing school yeah mm-hmm. yeah no it's good and his other one too is great full, full comp, comp. Yeah, yeah. yeah no yeah. that's the, I, I like full comp i mean that's where i think you get a lot of josh's uh, nuggets and good information mm-hmm. yeah so sure. something stemming from him too that was pretty profound when we had him on here was he talked about customers love being told what to do he was talking about building the perfect check and you can't really tell them what to do in the context of what's best for them unless yeah. you understand them yep mm-hmm. and it just fortifies your point brian absolutely you know peel back the layers of what they're thinking and give it to them i love it yeah so what else are we pivoting in the post-covid world technology okay when again we've talked about this a lot but you know do you have your online ordering set up right do you are you did you did you have a qr menu when it was the cool thing to do and then you pivoted back to a regular menu, eh, yeah. I don't know. I think I would still stand firm on the QR menu. I think that's the future. I think you can make changes quicker. You can change your pricing, change your pictures, do all kinds of stuff. I agree. And there's definitely some cool QR menu software out there and some things that are being developed. The inventor of the QR code has to be so excited. Because QR codes it kind of went hot. away. They oh, did. Yeah, yeah. Oh, and yeah. then they saw the resurgence of resurgences. Yeah, yeah. You well, know? I feel like I feel like I hope he lived to see it because he's like, this is gonna be the next big thing. Yeah. And, and then kind of like yeah. and it flopped. But the moment the pandemic hit, and I will say this, Apple made it a feature again. On the camera. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think that was probably the biggest game changer. You don't have to buy a third-party app. Well, you don't even have to have an app. It's just asking you, hey, do you want to go to this website? It's like, no. Well, now the technology that you could tap, you know, and you don't have a QR yeah. code. Yeah, right. What is it, the NFC? NFC, NFC? Yeah. You could just tap it, you know what I mean? So so watch out for that stuff coming, too, where you, you're, there's no QR code. You just have, like, a, a coaster-looking thing on the on the table, and you just tap your phone, and boom, you're right there. Oh. Now, do you have to wear your VR headset <clears throat> for that to work or no? No, but I think they'd be cool to, like, scroll through the menu yeah. with yeah. the VR goggles. Like, yeah, yeah. Eat, eat a, a like fake a bigger, dinner. Like, no, that is for pictures. That is cool. Yeah, just, that just came out of my brain. I like your style, man. Like what? Well, well think about this. Like, th- like dumb it down from there. Even the QR or the NFC, yeah. you got the menu on the phone now. Okay, you're worried about well, what pictures should I have, and which which pictures, yeah. which items should have a picture? They all should. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. no, they all should, and you could do it right there and right. change them and yeah. make them dynamic, and you know. And then further, what if you we showed a video of them like the steak sizzling in a broiler oh, and landing yeah. on the plate, me? and a risotto <laughs> being made and folded and put yeah. on a plate? Right, that'd be love badass. It. Yeah. Love it. People eat with their eyes, and we said it a million times, but that is the, what you're going to do to drive ticket average mm-hmm. in the digital world. It is a digital, but you still can have that hospitality and be able to serve up that customer experience, so it makes them want to order. And that's why you're seeing players who are accepting digital, attacking digital, do so well and increase that ticket average because of the ability to use pictures, photos, and video to educate the customer on the food and inspire them to order. And how well are you going to dominate your local competition when everybody's talking about how it's so cool that they've got all the pictures and yeah, videos yeah. and they're talking to their friend? Like, you know what I mean? And as long as you're providing quality food yeah. and service, it's the cool thing. Yeah. You know it's I mean? interesting. There's so much good food out there. It's almost like the restaurant space is becoming more of a marketing company than it is a food company, you know? It, like it, it is. If you build the better mousetrap but no one knows about it, it it's not going to be as successful as, exactly. the, as the average mousetrap that yeah. everyone is at top mm-hmm. of mind. And that, again, you're showing the videos, you're showing the pictures, you're using that content on an omni-channel approach, and you're pushing it out on your menu, online, on all the social media channels. I think it's a real opportunity. Yeah, for sure. So a couple of notes out of technology, you know, handheld POS systems, or even with the QR code, can the customer just place the order on the digital menu right there at the table? Mm, well, if you be. have a need for, you can't fill your need for labor, reduce your need for labor. Yeah, yeah. no, for sure. Kiosk. Um, and, yeah, kiosk, right, depending on the concept. Um, and then marketing software. And if you want, listen, I, I'm not going to go into this because you just need to go back to episode 87 with Rev. Oh, for and, sure. And, and he does a great job with talking about different softwares to automate marketing and 
awesome episode, so I'm not even going to try to, you know, delve into that. But the episode 87 would be a great thing to go back and yep. take a look at. So the final bullet point I've got on this is emerging trends. Okay. Um, obviously sanitation and safety is huge. It's always been that in the restaurant industry, but how do you, you know, how do you keep that in in your, you know, maybe not in the forefront, but you just keep it top of mind for people so they feel comfortable and safe and you've got those visitors coming in. And I will tell you this, I just did a walkthrough of a restaurant last week. I found there was something spilled on the wall. Uh, there was cobwebs under one of the chairs, uh, that was visible, um, from, from the cash register. The bathroom was out of toilet paper. And there was dirt on the ceiling fan. It sounds like instant pink eye. It was not instant pink eye, but I would still say you want to have toilet paper in the bathroom. <laughs> well, yeah, that would, that could yeah. that could be a that could risk. be a problem for somebody. <laughs> that, that could, could be, be a big problem for somebody. Where's that hotel bot at delivering the toilet? Yeah, paper? really. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do the walkthrough of your customer. And one thing I think was a good takeaway here is put yourself in the shoes of the customer. Yeah, for sure. That's, that's it, man. So, this is, this so emerging trend, sustainability is still big, guys. You yeah. know, mm-hmm. you know if, if you don't know what that is, like get, get on get on that. Um, Talk to your your food service rep about yeah. sustainable packaging and products that you can bring into your restaurant that will really show the customer that you're eco friendly. And some of these products, it's not 1996 anymore. Like you can get good deals on stuff now. Yeah, one thing we do at school, and and, and I don't know if this has hit like ubiquity in the industry yet, is we have a big garbage disposal. And we take all of our food scraps from class that we can't utilize for something else, and we put them down as garbage disposal, and they get pumped into a silo. And then they get you know processed somehow, probably mm-hmm. sterilized and sent to farmers for topsoil and compost. That's cool. No, that's really yeah. cool. Yeah, so I hope cool. we see more of that moving forward because it just makes sense, right? I just saw yeah. something uh- – and I'm really interested in it. It's actually for for the home. It's a it's a unit that you know maybe is a little bit bigger than a toaster. Mm-hmm. It's got a you know lid on it. You know what I mean? And you you put your banana peels and your coffee grounds and your you know what I mean just different stuff in there. And then it does its thing and you use it the same way. But yeah. it's like a home unit. You know? It's awesome. Yeah. No, that's cool. You know, uh, culinary. You know what I mean? And and, and, I, and there's a ton of things in culinary. But my my mind you know traveled instantly to does your food travel well so it goes back to brian's you know point in a, in a past episode about you know are, are you driving the you know product around for an hour and then opening it up making sure it works whether it's catering your carry out whatever it is you know but but your food's got to travel better because it's going to be traveling more than it ever has mm-hmm. um and then i think another thing that you know anthony might cringe at but maybe not he i think he'll understand is like listen you know there, there's labor issues out there so how do you take products that are labor saving items and still make them great you know what i mean so you, labor saving items you think processed you think pre-cooked you think all these things that are maybe negative towards the quality of your food but how do you how do you not t- you know take that di- di- maybe disadvantage and, and spin it and make it make great things with less labor a couple of years ago i would have i would have cringed at that yeah. now i don't because the plethora of amazing products with very clean labels is real yeah yeah if you look hard enough you can find something that that suits your your value proposition from a cleanliness standpoint from an integrity standpoint and you can spin it into something awesome mm-hmm. e- yeah. easy like i we took that potato soup that one time and we added some pulled chicken to it and some frozen peas and we put beef piece of puff pastry on top and it was the most amazing pot pie mm-hmm. yeah. but it was like a really clean label soup it was really wholesome yeah. locally made that sort of thing a lot yeah. of integrity real ingredients so like i don't know if there's any shame in that game yeah no you know no. It's, make sure it's, make sure it's an amazing culinary experience for your customer and then how you get there is up to you yeah so to round this out guys the big three now inflation and labor increases attack them now if you yeah. haven't been especially yes. attack them now no. don't wait okay and then learn how to pivot guys so take care of inflation, take care of labor through your menu, and then and then really learn how to be flexible and pivot and, and listen to your customers. Yeah, and, and, and permanent pivots. Yeah. Yeah, permanent pivots. The QR code example is a great one of that. Yeah. We've been yeah. talking about that a couple of times, and it's, it's, it's relevant. Thank you, Dave. Awesome. Yeah, this Thank is awesome. Awesome. Man. Yeah. Love it. the big three. Yeah, big three. And the new big three. Yeah, yeah, I'm down with it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Hey, this is a high-quality pod. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, everybody. Take Cut. care. Cut. Adios. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you for listening to Restaurantopia. The gratitude that we have for each and every one of you spending your precious time to listen to this podcast is immeasurable. Please make sure to tell a friend about this podcast. And also, if you have any feedback for us, visit us on restaurantopia.com and drop us a line. You can also subscribe on your favorite place to listen to podcasts. Thank you and have a great day. We also want to thank our sponsor, Hillcrest Food Service. If you're a local independent restaurant and are looking for a distributor who has chef and operational consulting, provides marketing support, does menu reviews, and most importantly, wants you to be successful, reach out to Hillcrest Food Service at 
hillcrestfoods.com. We are excited to announce the Restaurantopia VIP Text Club. Join by texting the word PODCAST to 844-928-4257. You will get access to exclusive content, industry news, deals, announcements, pro tips, and more. The VIP Text Club is an exclusive community of independent restaurant owners and professionals. Join today. Message and data rates may apply. Please check our website for our terms of service and privacy policy.